One of the great new features of the new Series 3 mixer is the ability to multi-track record to an SD card. You can record all 32 of your inputs plus your main left-right mix direct to SD card as uncompressed broadcast wave files. These are individual files that you can then open in any DAW. Of course, your mixer comes with Studio One, which is the perfect DAW to use. Because they're WAV files, they'll also be timestamped, so they'll come into your DAW all arranged together the way they're supposed to be. Now, when you're doing SD card recording, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. First, you want to make sure you select an appropriate SD card. We keep a list on our website of the latest, most compatible SD cards and our recommendations. Your SD card needs to be at least a Class 10 U3, but depending on the brand, some results may vary. This is why we've built some tools into the mixer to help you make sure that you are recording on a qualified SD card and that you can see exactly how many tracks your SD card is capable of recording reliably. So let's take a look at some of these features. Start by inserting your SD card into the SD card slot. From here, you can press the edit button in the live recording section. This will bring up the live recording screen. On this screen, you'll have information about your currently inserted SD card. You also have the SD card performance test and the new and load session buttons. The first thing you're going to want to do with your SD card is make sure it's formatted. We recommend using the formatting utility available from the SD Card Association. Using this in a full format mode or the full overwrite mode will ensure that your card is completely wiped clean and ready with the most optimization available to do multi-track recording. When you're doing a multi-track recording, what we're doing is writing 34 individual files in real time to the SD card. This is a lot of information at once. So it's really, really crucial that you format the card ahead of time to ensure the best possible results. After you format, before you use the card, we also recommend that you first perform a speed test on that card to make sure that you can record the number of tracks you need to. Exceeding the number of tracks reported on the SD card could result in errors in your recording. To perform the speed test, select Speed Test on the screen with your SD card inserted. Once the SD card performance test is complete, it'll display the transfer rate of the card and the number of tracks that you can reliably record to that card. From here, we can create a new session. Select the new session. On this screen, on the left, you have the names that the session will be created with. You can enter in artist, performance, and location. On the right, you'll have dropdowns that allow you to select the most recently used names. Press create to create your session. On this screen, You'll have the name of the session at the top. Next, you have your time counters, starting with your record duration time, then your current time of the current cursor location, and your remaining time, which will show how much more time you can record based off of the number of tracks that are armed. In the lower left, you'll have your arm tracks. If you press select all, it will arm all 34 tracks, your 32 inputs plus your main left right mix. Or you can check selected tracks, which will allow you to select individual tracks to record arm. Below this, the all digital source button allows you to change the source of all of your inputs from their currently selected input to the SD card to quickly be able to play back or check a recording. In the center of your screen is the record lock button. When you first enable recording, this will be locked, preventing you from accidentally stopping a recording by hitting the transport buttons. Unlocking will then allow you to stop the recording. A jog button below allows you to jog through the timeline of your recorded session. 
The lower right hand corner is probably the most important section. It'll tell you the status, whether it's preparing a recording, ready, actually recording, or playing back. Below this is your record errors. This area will show you if you are approaching a risk of having an error or if you have incurred errors on your recording. It'll be green with a zero if there are no errors. If your card begins to slow down and becomes at risk of having an error, it'll turn yellow. If you actually get an error, it'll turn red and begin counting the number of errors that occur on the card. When you're done with your recording, press the Save and Close button to ensure your session is properly saved along with your audio tracks. That covers setting up and doing a recording. But once you've done a recording, you can also play back that recording and do virtual sound checks. This is a great tool, not only when the band shows up late or some members aren't there for sound check or rehearsal, but it's also a great way to be able to train new users on how to use the mixer without taking up the time of the band. Let's take a look at our virtual sound check. With an SD card inserted in your mixer, press the sound check button. This will open up a list of all of the sessions on the current card. Select the session you'd like to open. You can also choose to load the mix, which will open up the mix that that session had when it was recorded. When you're ready, press the Recall button to open that session. Once your session is open, it will automatically assign you to all digital source so you're ready to do your virtual sound check. Then, simply press Play to begin your virtual sound check. When you're done, press Stop, and then you can save and close the session. That covers how to do a full multi-track recording to SD card without a computer, and also how to do a virtual sound check directly on the mixer. When recording with an SD card, remember to always do your speed check to make sure your card can handle the number of channels you need to record. Also, before you buy an SD card, double check our list to make sure that you're getting one of the recommended cards to get the track count and performance that you need on your mixer. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped. Be sure to check out the rest of our Studio Live Series 3 training videos.